Hey guys, the 4-1 Ghosted pick and roll and Spain leak are two plays that the Raptors run a lot during their clutch time possessions. The baseline out of bounds play I'm going to show you later is what led to the Raptors being the number one team in efficiency on baseline out of bounds plays last season. And I'm going to show you an early offense, little wrinkle, the wide pin that OG Ananobi uses quite often in these games. All these things are meant to illustrate how the Raptors achieve success. Uh, stay tuned, watch the video, and enjoy. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Actually, just a quick thing first, if you were subscribed over RaptorsRepublic.com, you would have had access to this stuff over a month ago, and most of my written work will not be filtering onto the YouTube channel. It will remain paywalled there, and you'll have to pay to get it. This is the kind of stuff that you'll be missing out on most of the time. And secondly, actually, a lot of the times when I do these set breakdowns and all this kind of stuff, people think that I'm giving the game away. Uh, I, I know pro scouts on other teams. Uh, they do just a fine job of figuring out what the Raptors run. I'm not um, illuminating anything that will be used against the Raptors, your favorite team. Just kind of showing the fan base, hey, this is what this is called. This is what play is being run, and this is why it works. So buckle in, and you'll find out all of that stuff. So Spain leak is a variation of the Spain pick and roll. For what the Spain pick and roll is, you have to go back to Zelsko Obradovic and former Raptors assistant, Sergio Scariolo, his work that he did with Team Spain, hence the Spain pick and roll. So the Spain pick and roll fundamentally is when you put a back screen from a guard against a big who's guarding that pick and roll action. That's the wrinkle. But you can throw one on top of that for teams that are looking to guard the Spain pick and roll, which the Raptors do. Here we'll see Gary Trent Jr. as that back screener before he leaks out. That's the wrinkle. And so typically there's three ways to guard Spain actions. The drop and switch where the big man drops and the guard slash wings, whoever's involved, switch. There's another, and that's you switch everything, which we have seen from the Raptors in the past and will more than likely see from them more often this season. And then thirdly, you can do no switching. And this is typically dependent on the player at the point of attack being able to climb the initial screen and the communication of the other two players to navigate the back screen in unison. If you get caught behind the action on Spain leak, you can X out from the corner to keep the play in front of the defense. So here the Bulls miscommunicate on their base package of drop and switch and basically ended up doubling the ball. Trent Jr. leaks out for a wide open shot and closes out the Bulls. Many people probably remember this game. So basically, this is a really good way for the Raptors to utilize their guard screeners and mobilize their shooters at the same time. So the 4-1 ghost screen. And when you see it, you'll say, oh, I've seen a lot of that. And yes, in clutch time as well. It's a fantastic play for the Raptors. Early on this season, it was the most effective uh, screening action in the NBA. So the general appeal of a ball screen is couched in here. The person on ball is more than likely to get some sort of advantage coming off the screen. Only NBA teams have gotten much better at guarding these actions as five-man units who shift and adapt to that advantage, cheating over to the one side, zoning up the weak side, that kind of stuff. The ghost action brings it back to the point of attack and tries to win there. And the ghost screen is kind of a read and react play from the screener. It's no longer about where the screener might go after they lay it down. It's about whether or not they actually set that screen. The defenders are on the back foot to guard a two-man action. They slow down, and suddenly one of the league's best three-point shooters in Fred Van Vliet can burst into open space. That's easy. That's a great look. And maybe the trailing defender doesn't think you're going to slow down, so you do plant the screen and give your handler major clearance around the edge. There is, however, a way to halt this action in its tracks, and that's by switching it, which is what makes the 4-1 aspect of it so great, because if you switch Van Vliet's primary defender onto Siakam, that's food. If Siakam doesn't get the edge, if Van Vliet doesn't get to burst into space, you get a mismatch at the very least. Having led the NBA in isolations last year, one of the concrete takeaways of Siakam's current form, where he looks like a top 10 player, is he's very difficult to stop one-on-one. -on -one. And not only that, but he's been the most efficient double decision maker in the league this year. So teams that try and guard him in single coverage lose, and teams that guard him via doubles lose even harder. The only way to stop Siakam from driving an offense forward is to shade him into spots as a team and hope for misses from he or his teammates. And a fun little thing we can notice too is the Clippers here, they pre-switch Terrence Mann onto Boucher so they can keep Leonard out of the screening action. But the Raptors countered by shifting into a stagger set that Van Vliet ended up ghosting and bang, a triple. 
you'll notice some of these actions do come in an empty side. And typically teams have been trending towards filling out both corners in their pick and roll actions. But when you have a two versus two thing going on and it's a really powerful two man action with great players like Fred and Pascal, an empty side is a really good way to gain an advantage while keeping the help side away from any type of switch or shading over. So this is their home run baseline out of bounds play called lift double stagger. Thank you for the consultation on the name, Evan Gualberto. But anyway, how are the Raptors, who have typically been poor in the half court, weaponizing a static action like this? Well, basically because of Fred Van Vliet and because of the Raptors' unusual size in the middle of their lineup, not the top end. They get to inbound close to the basket, which makes things more dangerous for their bigs in the middle of their lineup to duck in. And that means teams will err on the side of overloading under the bucket and an inbounder such as Van Vliet can now leak out behind the screens and cash a triple. This provides the defense with the same dilemma any sort of staggered action does. Do you trail? Do you try and cheat over the top? You definitely don't want to switch. Otherwise, one of the bigs will seal the guard you leave behind. Van Vliet finds heaps of success by putting the defense in this mixer. If you trail, he'll turn the corner. Maybe get a step up screen and operate offense from there. If you cheat, He'll backtrack into the open space and cash that triple. The Raptors shrink the floor near the bucket and let Van Vliet worm his way to victory on these possessions. It's simple, but it's great. And if you've been watching OG Ananobi this year or at any point in time, you know that when he gets downhill and can maintain that balance, he sinks the defense, he forces rotation. Quite often he can get assists in that scenario. Uh, his free throws have been lower this year, but but the wide pin for the Raptors and OG Ananobi is typically just a way to switch play, get the ball from one side to another, and have OG Ananobi, one of their best shooters, filter from corner to corner to space things out. But he can also, in some cases, turn the corner, flatten it out, and take a pick and roll possession out of it. It's just one of the many things that you can do in the Raptors read and react offense. Sometimes he's more willing to just move the ball on and get the ball into Fred's hands or Pascal's hands. And he doesn't want to disrupt the flow. He doesn't want to take too much for himself. I understand that. But there is some potential for OG to be able to turn the corner more often and kind of disrupt what teams expect from that play and to put pressure on the rim. With Pascal Siakam out currently, this might be an extremely important facet of the Raptors offense for OG to be a little bit more aggressive in. With good technique, you can come off a screen, put your man in a trail position, and create a two-on-one situation versus a big, or encourage the defense to shift towards you. If your defender goes under, you can backtrack into space while your big flips the screen into a flare. There's lots of opportunity. We've seen Norman Powell, for example, be one of the most explosive and efficient tertiary scores in basketball, doing most of his work off of wide pins. So that's a small portion of the Raptors offense, of course, but in that contains some of their favorite plays and plays that when you're watching, you'll be able to go, hey, I know what that is. You can tell it to the people you're watching with, say, hey, this is that. That's the name. This is why it worked. I hope we could all learn a little bit more about basketball together. That's what I hope to achieve anyway with this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you did learn something. Hopefully this was uh, it helps expand why you appreciate basketball or maybe you're just, you know, kind of kicking around learning about the game. Maybe you just are listening to a guy talk on YouTube for whatever reason, whatever it is. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. I've been Samson Folk. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe over at the website. Leave a like. And uh, yeah, I'll see you.